Welcome back to Greg's Maker Corner. In this video series, I'm going to be building the LDO Box Turtle Automated Filament Changer Kit. If you've ever wondered how to get multi-material capability on your Voron or other open source clipper printer, I hope this will be a good video for you. And I'd like to thank LDO for sponsoring my channel in this video, and thanks for sending me this kit. Something else I want to talk about before I get into building this is just the planning aspect of the box turtle. One of the things that you need to be aware of is that, yes, this is going to work on a clipper-based machine. You do need to think about how is it going to be installed on your printer and will your tool head be able to support it. I decided to go with the Voron 2.4. A Trident or Voron 2.4 would be a great machine to go with because you can install a tool head that is compatible with this. Your tool head does need to be able to support filament cutting. And if you've ever used a bamboo machine, you know what I'm talking about. So the bamboo machine will kind of move to the side and cut the filament, and then that'll allow you to, change, to do the filament change cleanly. Without having that capability, you are going to have a little bit more to, to figure out and possibly customize to get this setup working. So with that in mind, I'm going to talk a little bit about the uh, tool head changes that you're going to need for the Voron 2.4 Stealth Burner. The parts that you see here just came out of this bag. And this is what's called the Filamatrix, and it is for the Stealth Burner CW2. I had these parts printed because I really like the quality and I want, I want these parts to shine. But you can see here, this is what you're going to get when you go through West 3D and, and Thunder Keys prints your parts. These are very nice. This is Ambrosia ASA with the sparkle. You can find it on their website as well. But just look at the quality. All the tolerances are going to be really good, so you don't have to worry about fitting your fans or your parts. I am running a uh, Rapido Original High Flow. Here's the shroud. You can just see there's a lot of really good quality parts here. And this is kind of cool. This is the little calibration piece that just shows that uh, his tolerances are good. So if you are printing the box turtle out, there is a manual, a section that you can go through that allows you to test the tolerances of your printer. There are some pretty tricky parts from what I understand that are gonna be tight to fit. And if they are too tight, you know you've got some more tuning to do. It's really nice to see that Brian included this. We've got this little West 3D dude. And my favorite, uh, the caramel apple pop, yummy. And with that, let's go ahead and get the unboxing going. All right, got a little note here. And this is just talking about the TN buffer. So a little bit of information there. One of the things I've really come to appreciate about LDO is that they do have everything really nice and organized in their kits. They've been doing this for a while now. This is your cables kit. Got some PTFE. Some PETG. Most likely be some transparent parts that we want to be able to print. And this is kind of a nice add-on. So. I know these are these are pieces that you would normally have to print in TPU. So we've got these parts here. We've got uh, machine screws and hardware, and they're all labeled. So this is hardware for wheel. So when you're looking for things, you can just look at the bag. And here's the filometrics. Are going to need parts as you build that tool head. Dig in here for a minute. And we've got machine screws. Got all the little sliding nuts here. Some more slide in nuts, some springs, got some uh, switches, some heat inserts, some washers, set screw. So got just about everything you need. We're going to keep all that together. Something that I'll show in a little bit here is there's also a really good manual. And as you go through the manual, you'll know which parts to use. And here are some steppers along with the heat sinks. Got the TN buffer for box turtle hard mounts. And the main kit. There's quite a bit of stuff in here, including some multicolored zip ties. That's kind of different. Let's take, take a look at this. So we've got some cool zip ties. Got some little gears here for the respooler. Some fans, or a fan. Bearings. Quite a bit of ABEX 7 bearings. Got some magnets. Bowden couplers for the PTFE. Got some helical gears made out of nylon. 
a drill bit. Nice. We've got some shafts. So there's a lot in here. Uh, even some grease. The dual drive kit. So this is from Fetus. And of course all your typical machine screws and whatnot. We've got some motors here and captive tension screws. There's quite a bit in there. I'll go ahead and pack that back up. Oh, that's cool. We've got a little keychain, a little box trail keychain. Neat. We've got a couple different sets of extrusions. Those are going to come in handy. Part of the frame as we build it out. Similar to a 3D printer. And of course the LDO stepper kit. These are going to be your stepper motors that you need. And these are pretty small little pancake motors. They appear to be the same one that you would use in your uh, tool head, like for a stealth burner or a mini afterburner. So you get four of those. And of course you gotta have the brain of the thing. And this is the, called the AFC light board version 1.0. And this is where you're gonna connect all of your stepper motors and a whole lot of other uh, sensors and switches and things. So that's all gonna be connected through here. From what I understand, you're also going to run a USB to this, as well as a 24 volt from your printer. And this is going to be running Clipper as well, and you're gonna, you, depending on how you connect it, you're just going to be adding the configuration to your config file, um, probably to an include file. I plan on covering the configuration of this as well. In addition to the tool head and the fill matrix, you're also going to need to print or source your own 3D printed parts for the actual box drill itself. Now I, I thought long and hard about this and I know the parts are fairly expensive to buy. I decided to print my own parts. One of the things that you're going to want to do is make sure that you print the calibration tool. You're also going to need to have almost two rolls of filament, two, two uh, kilograms of filament. And that is a lot of filament actually and I'll show you where that filament is mostly spent here in a second as I show you the parts that I printed. The nice thing about this is you can print everything in PLA. Uh, you could also maybe do a few of the parts like the extruder housing in ASA or ABS if you wanted to. I actually ended up using three different colors and uh, let me go ahead and show you my parts and it'll give you a sense of what you're going to need to print for this project. So I chose a few different colors for my parts and I'll just walk through what those colors were. So this, this particular color here is the i3D Max Blue PLA Plus. I had this roll of Atomic PLA, and this is actually their Smoke PLA. So these are the roller parts here, and they still have some of the brims here that I haven't taken off yet. But I, I like this, uh, it kind of gives you this translucent effect. So I've got a mix of the Smoke PLA and then kind of the final color here is this PLACF from Polymaker. I really like this filament. As you can see, it's just got amazing quality. You really don't see the layer lines. It's very smooth. This is one of the tray pieces. You're gonna need four of these guys. And this is where I think I burned up more than half a roll just on these trays. Now they do recommend that you use dryroid infill 20%. So there, there's a lot, a lot of filament in these. One of the other things that I'll point out is when you're printing these parts, you don't need to worry about supports. If a part does need supports, they are built into the model. Like in this case, this is one of the supports and it just breaks away. That's really nice. You don't, and, and the parts are all oriented how you need them. So when you go to print this, it's real, they've really taken out a lot of the guesswork. The file naming, as you go through the parts, you're also going to have a very familiar file naming scheme. So anything that is an accent part is labeled with underscore A. Uh, anything that's a main part doesn't have any special labeling. And then there's also a convention where they'll put the number, the quantity of the parts that you need in there. So it's very similar to what the, the Boron convention is. Yeah, these parts are looking pretty good. And before I start getting into the build of this, uh, I just want to talk a little bit about why you might want to build a box turtle. So over the last couple of years, there has definitely been a trend for multicolor printing. Now I started my journey with multicolor printing probably, I think it was at least five or six years ago, and that was with the Pallet 2. And the Pallet 2 was a separate standalone unit. You could um, easily mount it to just about any printer, but you did have to go through 
some custom software uh, and configuration and calibration in order to get a print. That's still a solution. They're still around. One of the biggest challenges that I had ran into with the palette is that I would frequently find broken filament in there and it was really hard to clear out because PLA tends to not like to bend around in tight spaces. So if you're ever printing PLA, which is what I use a lot when I'm printing multicolor, there are other systems out there like the Prusa has the MMU system. I think they're up to MMU3 now. And that is a system as well. I, I think that the biggest challenge with that, I think it's primarily for a Prusa, right? So if you want to incorporate that into other machines, that may be a little challenging. I've also heard that it's pretty fiddly to get set up and I've heard mixed results on success. So those systems and that approach has been around for a while. You also have the tool head, you know, the multi tool heads and that, that's really a lot of dollars, right? If you are somebody who is going through thousands of rolls of filament a month, a multi tool head printer might be a good plan. A multi tool head printer like the Prusa XL may be a good way to go because you're eventually you may save on filament. One of the challenges with um, MMUs are that you're frequently going to have a purge tower and you're or you're going to have to get rid of that filament either through a purge tower or as with a bamboo machine you have the little poops. Either way there's a purging process and that's going to use up a lot of filament. On to bamboo. So bamboo in the last couple of years has really made multicolor printing easy. I'll even say it, it just worked. I bought a bamboo A1 mini just for the MMU experience because I, I had heard how easy it was and how, how well it worked, and it, it really is. You can also get it obviously on the X1C, the P1S, some of the more expensive Core XY bamboo printers. I am a more of a DIY open source guy, and that's why I'm going with the Box Turtle. What we're looking for with this next generation of MMU, like the Box Turtle, is simplicity and just works. And, and here's the challenge though with that. When you're building a Voron, when you're building a VZBot, really any clipper-based printer that's open source, they're all going to be different and bamboo has the ability to pretty much own the entire stack of the printer uh, one of the challenges with mmus is that you need the ability to cut your your uh, filament or or form your filament and until that's sort of a native feature of printers um, you're going to have to add that on or retrofit that which is the case for the war on 2.4 so I would say right now it's not going to be as smooth as just going out and getting a printer that natively supports MMU and comes out of the box. I do think it's the next best thing. There are also other versions of MMUs like the Enrage Rabbit Carrot Feeder, the ERCF, and those are those are kind of recent, but I've kind of heard similar things to the MMU. They're kind of hard to get set up and configured and running. As with a lot of those things, once you get them set up, they're going to be good. They're going to work. Part of my reasoning for building one of these is that I want to see if have we come along? Do we have a good solution for this? I'm looking forward to seeing how this build goes and stay tuned and I'll show you how to build one of these things.